Olympics, you really do find out that your colleagues have got hidden talents and uh, one of them is used to sitting in the gallery or the control room actually directing BBC World News rather than making magic, just making magical TV, you could say. Andy is with me here. Now, normally he's behind the camera and Hannah from BBC Arabic is also here. And Andy, you are a member of the esteemed Magic Circle in your spare time. That's true. Uh, just yes. tell us what it is, how you got into it. Well, the Magic Circle's um, probably the world's most famous club for magicians. It's over 100 years old and um, it started as a gentleman's club but is now more of a, a social club for magicians but it maintains a headquarters near Euston Station in London uh, we have a museum, we have a library and we still put on shows for the public from time to time. And this is pretty hard to get into, it's not just anyone can It's turn quite up. difficult to join, um, you have to show you've got a, a good interest in magic but you also have to perform an audition um, you perform in front of a panel and you need to get, I think it's over 80% to be allowed to join, they mark you Wow. Uh, as you're doing it. Uh, you can also join by writing a thesis if you're a collector or a historian. And so you've like been that. through this initiation? I have, yes. And Quite a while back, but yes. <laughs> and you've been into magic for a long time. There's also some rather esteemed members dotted around. There are. One of them I, I think we've got a picture the of. The most famous member of the Magic Circle is probably the, uh, Prince Charles. <laughs> who, and they made him perform an audition to get in. He performed the cups and balls trick. And the cups that he used are still in the Magic Circle Museum. Wonderful. Uh, Hala, I mean, if you look at this globally, in the Arab world, uh, mm. how is magic viewed? What is said about it? Well, magic is viewed quite differently. Um, you sort of have to bear in mind that magic, it's less something to like amaze and excite and uh, just intrigue. It's less of a performance and it's actually more similar to sorcery like it used to be maybe in the Middle Ages in Europe. So people actually sometimes go to the local sorcerer to cast spells on their neighbours. I mean, this is what my Iraqi colleagues tell me happens in many areas of Iraq. That, and it's used often to like split couples up, get couples together, um, ruin the fortunes of a hated family or something like that. So it's, but also like in, in Islam as well, there are specific like verses in the Quran um, forbidding it. So it's forbidden just like drinking is forbidden. And it's kind of classed in those kind of things that like you're not really supposed to do because that um, infringes on God's um, sort of powers. So if you can like change how somebody, change what somebody does, influence what they do, what they think, uh, then you're entering into sort of divine um, fate and influence fate. This can't be done according to Islam, so anyone who does that is uh, like severely looked down on. Uh, Andy, I mean that's fascinating, isn't it? But uh, how, how far is the transition from, well, from that to, to the entertainment in, sort in of the magic? The Magic Circle Museum is the first book that was ever written in the English language about magic, and it's a book called The Discovery of Witchcraft. It was written by a guy called Reginald Scott, who at the time was the Witchfinder General and he decided that perhaps uh, he ought to look a bit further into the methods that some of the people thought to be witches were using. And he actually wrote a, a long uh, explanation for several of the tricks in use. It's written in Old English, it's quite hard to read. But some of the tricks in it are still performed today. The cut and restored rope, as it's performed today, is pretty much as described in that book. Now, I believe you can actually do a degree in magic in some yes, parts of the world. Um, recently, in the, uh, the, there is a World Championships of Magic about every four years. It's organised by an organisation called FISM. And the last one took place in Blackpool, England. Prior to that, it was in Beijing. But um, at the last one, which took place last year, the South Koreans won many of the stage awards with some really innovative and amazing magic. And in South Korea, you can study magic as a performance art, as a university degree. Wow. So they put an <laughs> awful lot of work and study into, into the stuff they're performing. Wow. And um, we've been doing a few tricks while we've been sitting here. Well, Andy's right. been doing a few tricks. Uh, both uh, on Hala and me. Um, you're going to do one live on BBC World News. No oh, yes. pressure then. No pressure, yeah. Um, <laughs> this is just to make the point really that um, I'm just going to do a, uh, something here which depending on whether you believe I'm genuinely psychic or gifted with some powers or I might just be doing a card trick. But we've got 52 different cards and hence 52 different possible thoughts. Just touch the back of one of them for me. That one? Yep. Okay, you take that. Now, we'll get rid of the rest. I'll uh, turn my back. Shall I show the camera show the what camera, it is? I will look away. Okay. Okay, and it's not looked at it. All right. So, um, it's either a red card or a black card. So, just say red or black, and you twitch very slightly on red, so I'm going <laughs> to say it's red, uh, which means it's either a heart or a diamond. So, I'm going to go with diamonds. 
So we'll just go through the values very quickly. Ace, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Moves, I think, seven of diamonds. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> now you see, if I if I'd done that with a pack of tarot cards and said I was going to be telling your fortune, your perception might be slightly different. Um, and uh, well, I think it's interesting, like how you can you can really read people's body language. It's like, and because we think that we can like hide things, and obviously like we can't. We at were all. trying very hard <laughs> we not to give any glimmer, but maybe even that's a deception. Maybe he's not looking at the body maybe language. Maybe I've just read too many books <laughs> on how to do card magic. Yeah. Well. Andy, thank you very much for showing us your other talents that don't involve television production. And Hala, thank you very much for giving us another perspective uh, from another part of the world.